hello hello everyone this is blade i hope everyone's doing great first of all thank you thank you guys so much for getting the first episode of this series uh 60 likes to be honest i was not expecting that we're gonna get 60 likes in less than six hours which is insane for my channel it's really really insane and to be honest to be honest i, I was kind of a little bit uh, uh stressed i was actually sweating when i saw the number the reason why because i promise you guys that i'm gonna upload the next episode once we reach 60 likes and in six hours, I cannot prepare a full video, a, a, like a review video, without a script in six hours. It's just not possible. So, um, so yeah, but thank you, thank you guys. And I, as I promised, this is going to be the second episode uh, for this series. Now, so I don't do the same mistakes as last video. I'm going to ask for 100 likes. I know it's a little bit a lot, just so I can buy myself enough time so I can actually do the script for the third video. So I don't squeeze myself in time. Um, okay. So let's start. So uh, today's video, we're going to learn two main things. We're going to learn how to push our lead in an easier matchup. So our first episode is hard, hard matchup. And we learned one of the most important things is recall uh, timers. This is the first uh, the first episode we learned. So this is the second episode. If you haven't watched the first episode, go please watch it. Now, I'm gonna just going to put a little bit of reminder at the start of the video. Please, if you're below plat, this video might be not suitable for you. Okay, because this is gonna I'm gonna talk about stuff that a little bit high advanced. This this the stuff in this video on or in this series generally gonna be for plat and higher. If you're plat, emerald, and diamond, this is gonna be really really helpful because it's gonna help you to push your lead if you're ahead, and if, if you're behind, it helps you to stabilize and don't fall even further behind. Okay, so uh, so yeah, so people who are stuck in plat, emerald, and diamond, this video helps you hopefully to improve and hopefully reach to the master level. Okay. Uh, so so yeah so again we talk about uh, the first episode we talk about uh, recall timers this episode we're gonna we're gonna talk about an easier matchup or a matchup that talent actually have a room to uh, uh, to win it rather than playing against Vlad which is really really hot now uh, we're gonna play uh, this video we're gonna talk about uh, two things zoning and talk about zoning and then the the second thing we're gonna talk about is uh, jungle tracking but I'm going to talk first about jungle tracking before uh, I start the, the review video. So just kind of understand why. Okay. So I'm going to bring a map right now. Here, this is the map. Okay. So the first thing we need to understand is, or to learn is, is the jungle path. And you have to know how jungle has path in order for you to track them. Okay. So I'm going to talk about those, the most basic uh, uh, jungle paths. I'm not going to go deep into it. Hopefully, maybe in the future episode, I'm going to talk deep in, in, into it, like in, in Master or Diamond or even uh, Grand Master like Jungle Paths. But I'm talking the most basic ones. So if you're in Plat and Emerald, you're most likely going to see this kind of paths. Okay? So the first pass, uh, if obviously the enemy team going to start blue and you're red, red side. So most likely the enemy jungle going to most likely going to start red and then go Krugs and then they go Raptors. And then from Raptors, they go Wolves. From Wolves, they go Blue. And then from Blue, they go... Grom, and then from Grom, either they go Scuttle. If they have enough time, they can gank topside or they can gank mid lane. They they can do whatever they want after finishing all the camps, okay? The reason why they have to do that, because it's the most efficient uh, way to uh, get uh, the highest CS, okay? So uh, that's why junglers usually start from a side and then go to the other side rather than just immediately gank. Yes, they can gank, but most likely they can go to the other side because this is technically the meta uh, is to pull clear, okay? So, so yeah. So if they start red and they they're gonna end up in top side. If they start bot side and red, they're gonna end up in top side. And this this pathing called is called uh, uh, is pathing towards top, and that means their top side is the strong side, okay? Because he's most likely gonna gain either top or gain mid, but most likely gonna gain top, okay? Uh, vice versa, if he started blue, and then he gets gonna. Grom, he's gonna go Grom. From Grom, he's gonna go Wolves. From Wolves, he's gonna go Raptors. And from Raptors, he's gonna go Red. And from Red, he's gonna go to Grugs. And then he's gonna gank either bot side, go to the Scuttle Grab, or ganks from mid lane. Now, the reason why we, we need this to know uh, this jungle pathing is so we can track them. Okay? Now, there's some kind of honorable mentions, but I'm gonna mention them later, okay? The way you track them is by warding the Raptors at 1 minute and 20 seconds. So in one minute, 20 seconds, you go and wrap and ward the Raptors. So before before even before the first wave meet in the center, you go and ward the Raptors. The reason why you ward the Raptors, so we can know where the jungle is sought. Because if you know if the jungle is sought red or blue, you can actually position yourself in a way that you become ungankable. 
And you're going to see in the video also, I did it in this video, okay? So you're going to position yourself or your play style is going to be a little bit different. And your positioning in lane is going to be a little bit different. So you become ungankable, okay? So again, if you ward the Raptors on 1 minute and 20 seconds, so what's going to happen is if he started red and then he's going to go Krugs, and then from Krugs, he's going to go Raptors. If he does that path, if he starts red and you warded the Raptors, you're always going to ward the Raptors. And he starts red, you're going to see the enemy jungler on Raptors around 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Around that. Sometimes a little bit, maybe, maybe 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Sometimes a little bit faster, depends on how uh, fast the jungler clears. Okay? But ar around around 2 minutes and 40 seconds or 2 minutes and 20 seconds. Okay? You're going to see the if he started red, he's going to go, uh, he's going to uh, be on Raptors. He's going to see him on Raptors around... Uh, this time and you can actually press tab and see how many how much cs he has if he has 8 cs that means he's going towards his wolf because he, he every camp give you 4 cs if he takes red and then he take rugs that means he has 8 cs and he's if he takes raptors he's gonna have 12 and then he's gonna go to his wolves okay if if you see if you see if you ward the raptors and you see the jungler on 20 minute and 30 seconds that means and he has 8 cs that means he's gonna finish the raptors and he's most likely gonna gank again gank he's gonna go towards his wolves and that means we know he's gonna go towards his blue and then gromp and then if he's gonna gank he's gonna gank top side or he's gonna gank mid but from the top side okay the same thing applies if he started blue if you ward raptors and one minute and 20 seconds one minute and 20 seconds most you're gonna see you're gonna see the the enemy jungler on on the raptors around around three minutes around three minutes and maybe 10 seconds 15 seconds okay you're gonna see you're gonna see the the uh, uh the enemy jungler. sometimes you don't even see him if he clears so slow sometimes you don't see him but you but if you didn't see if he didn't see any if he didn't see the jungle at all on your raptors that means he definitely definitely started blue definitely and that means he's gonna go towards bot side and if is if he's gonna gain mid lane he's gonna gain mid lane from the bot side and or either he's gonna gain bot side, or he's gonna uh, go get the uh, get the scuttle and recall. Okay, so that means if if we don't see the jungler or we see him late, we're gonna see him, if you see him on the raptors, if he saw the blue and you see him on raptors, he's most likely gonna have 12 CS, and if he kills the raptors, he's gonna have 60. Okay, so because this is four, 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 this is 12, and four, this is give you 60. Okay, and if you're gonna gain mid lane, most likely you're gonna gain from bot side. So then you're gonna hover the top side. Okay, and you also you're gonna warn your bot side because if the jungler gonna gank, he's gonna get either bot side or mid lane. That's the only two options. Okay, because it's not efficient. If he's gonna gank top side, he has to recall first and then go top side. Okay, okay. So th this is how we track junglers is by warding the raptors at one minute and twenty seconds, and then we definitely gonna see the junglers. If we don't see him, that means he saw the blue. If we see him, that means he saw the red, and vice versa, right? Vice versa. If if you're in this side of the map, you're gonna go ward the raptors. And if you see him in uh, 2 minutes and 30 seconds, that means he started red. And you're also going to see his CS and you're going to see he has red buff. And if he started blue, you're either not going to see him or you're going to see him late. Like 3 minutes and maybe 20 seconds or 15 seconds. Maybe sometimes 3 seconds and like 9 seconds. Uh, 3 minutes and 9 seconds. Okay? If you don't see him at all, that means he also started blue and he's pathing towards top side. That means he's going to gain mid lane from the top side. Okay? Okay, so this is the, uh, in general, jungle pathing, okay? Now, the reason why I taught you how to track the junglers because it allows you to play aggressive without being, uh, without being killed by a gank, okay? So you're gonna see, we're gonna start the video from now, and you're gonna see, I'm gonna go and ward the raptors at 1 minute and 20, uh, like, if you quite watch, at 1 minute and 20 seconds, I ward the raptors like this, and then I go back to mid lane, okay? So who, who are we playing against? We're playing against Katarina, okay? So you see, we're playing against Katrina. So a quick question: Who does win? Who does who who, who wins this matchup? Does Talon wins against Katrina or Katrina wins against Talon? It's a skill matchup. However, however, Talon has the upper hand. If Talon plays perfectly and Katrina plays perfectly, Talon will win. Okay. So this is a kind of somewhat not an easy matchup. It's a still still a skill a skill matchup, but you still have the advantage. And now in this game, I'm gonna show you how to push the advantage, and I'm gonna show you how to zone. Okay, how to zone people from cs okay how to zone people from cs so he can have an advantage from cs zone from cs okay the reason why i say zone from cs either you either gonna zone her from cs or you're gonna kill her either one either gonna kill her or zone her from cs either way you're gonna get you're gonna get you're gonna get ahead okay 
So let's watch. Let's continue. Okay. So at level one, you can see me. Wait, let, let me go mute. Okay. Can you see me at level one? If you can see level one, I, I hitting the the minions a couple of times so I can get uh, like the wave. You can slowly push towards her. Okay. I mean, I get the one minion. And you can see me. Just do you see how aggressive I play? If you watch the first episode, I was legit behind my cast of minions when I played against Vlad. But now I'm actually walking up. The reason why I'm walking up because I'm, I'm trying to zone. I'm trying to see. I'm not even throwing my W. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the cat, uh, the Katarina to go for the minions, to go for the CS, so I can throw my W and hit her. Uh, uh, get two hits for my W, the initial and the returning W. Okay. So this is the idea. I'm trying to zone her. If she gets the CS, fine. You get the CS, but I'm gonna damage you. And if you keep doing that, I'm gonna kill you. And if she if she chose to go away and not CS, well she's gonna lose gold. And I'm gonna get I'm gonna save my mana. I'm gonna, still gonna hold my W. And she's gonna lose gold. I'm gonna have more gold than her. I'm gonna have more CS. And this is how to zone. And you can see she's gonna go for this minion. Watch this. I throw my W. And I hit her twice. Do you see this? So I already like did almost almost 150 damage of her health bar from one W at level one. While also zoning her. She missed two minions, by the way. Do you see this? So I'm, I go, and uh, since I'm stronger than the Katarina, I know I can walk up. She cannot do anything. I'm stronger than her level one. Talon is like Darius in, in, in between assassins. Talon actually wins almost any single assassin at level one. So you against Fizz, you win it. You against Kiana, you win it. You against Zed, you also win it. You against Katarina, you win it. You against Cassidy, you also win it. You're really, really strong at level one. However, obviously not. Obviously only among assassins. It's like, uh, uh, by the way, I don't consider Yasuo and Yoni assassin because they get they gain shield, and shield is not a uh, part of assassin kit. Okay, but but yeah, but all the assassins that I mentioned, talent is stronger than uh, stronger than them at level one. So you need to actually fight them and zone them at level one. Okay, so I'm gonna keep going. You can see I'm last hitting. I'm I'm just trying to zone her. Do you see? I'm not throwing my W. I have my W, but I'm not throwing it. Why? Because I'm trying to wait to guarantee my W. Trying to wait for the Katarina to walk up for the minions. So I can throw my W and guarantee the two hits. Do you see this? I'm not throwing my W. I'm just holding it. The moment you go for the CS, I'm going to throw my W. So I can save my mana and also damage her. I'm level 2. So Katarina has to respect me. You can see. I'm just zoning her. She, she's not CSing. The Katarina still has only one CS. Do you see? Only has one CS. Do you see this? I'm not throwing my W because I don't need to. I need to guarantee my W. Do you see this? And now, look, watch, 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 watch the Viego. Now, I'm going to jump because I have a, a, a level advantage, but watch the Viego. We see the Viego around 1 minute and 22 seconds. What does that mean when we see the Viego? What, would we, what did we say when we see Viego and, and we see the enemy jungle at tw uh, one, 2 minutes and 20, 20, uh, 22 seconds? That means he started red and he finished Krugs and now he's going Graptors. What does that mean? That means he's also the next camp going to be Wolves. Do you see this? So what are we going to do? We're going to hug the bot side. You're going to see me. Okay, so I, I obviously traded a level two against the Katarina. And obviously won it because I have level advantage. And we can see I'm, I'm seeing the, do you see? I just saw that the, the Viego, if you look at the map, I just saw the Viego finishing the, the Raptors. What does that mean? That means he's most likely, not most likely, he is going to his Wolves. Do you see this? So I know where Viego is. That means I'm playing aggressive. Allow me to play aggressive. Because I know where the Viego is, and if Viego is gonna gank me, he's gonna gank me from top side, and I'm also gonna hug the bot side, so I'm, he cannot kill me or even damage me. So I can allow me to play aggressive, okay? If I don't know where the Viego, he might come from bot side, and then it just kills me or damage me, okay? So this is this is what this is why the reason you need to uh, actually know how to drag the jungler because it allows you to play aggressive. And you can see I'm just still zoning her. I have 13 CS, and the Katarina has 7 CS. And I, I, she has half HP. And you can see, I'm just pushing the wave, zoning her. And I keep zoning her. You can see, uh, she, that's, a, that's a really good dagger from by, uh, uh, by the Katarina, by the way. And you can see, she has 9 CS, I have 17. And I'm still zoning her. By the way, I still know, I still know that the Viego is topside. What does that mean? Look, 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 look at my position. Look, look at me. Why am I missing in the bot side? Do you see? This is the minion. This is the center. I'm, I'm staying here in this bot side. Why? Because I know the Vega on Wolves. And if he's going to gank mid, he's going to gank from this side. So I can always run away. Do you see this? Because I know the Vega in top side. Okay? If I if I saw the Vega late, I'm going to swap. I'm going to stay here. Because I know Viego, if, if Viego came... If Viego started blue and he, he went to his right and I saw him late in the ward, I'm going to stay here. I'm going to position here in this top, in top side. Do you see this? But since I know... Since I know Viego is on, on Wolves and on blue, I'm positioning in bot side. Do you see this? I'm hugging my bot side. My bot river. 
Do you see this? Because I know Viego is topside and he might come mid. Because look at my position. I'm away from my tower and I'm playing really aggressive. Do you see this? So tracking the jungle allowed me to play aggressive without getting ganked, without getting punished. Okay? So we're going to continue the video and we're going to watch uh, uh, the Katarina. I'm still zoning her. Obviously, she's under her tower, so I cannot do much. And you can see, I'm just... I'm not throwing my W, although I have a lot of mana. I'm just waiting for this minions to go low so I can W her so I can guarantee my both hits on my W. Do you see this? And then she used her E. She used an ability. So now she cannot fight me back. Can you see? Every time she goes for a... Do you see this? Every time she goes for a minion, I immediately damage her. I fight her back. I'm trying to zone her. Getting her low, low on HP. And you see, I have more HP and I have more CS. And this is how you actually want to play aggressive. And in a winning matchup, because if if you don't track the jungler and you're playing aggressive, you're most likely gonna get ganked and then die, and then you're probably gonna feed. Okay, especially against assassin matchups, you don't you, you don't want to die in the early game because you're most likely uh, the enemy the enemy assassin gonna uh, gonna snowball. And you can see, I'm just zoning her. I'm not throwing my W. I'm just waiting. Now I'm not supposed to hug top side. I'm supposed to go bot side. You can see, I'm just watching my minions. The, Every time that my minion is about to die, I walk up to, to make Katarina not farm it. And I can see, I see Katarina is trying to, to, to back. I refuse. I don't make her uh, uh, recall. And I make it now. Now I have multiple options. This is the sixth wave, by the way, just for people to know. This is the sixth wave. Okay. So, so I could have, what I could have done is I could have, if you, if you watch the first episode, I could have pushed the fifth wave, hard push it and then recall. And I get the free recall. I can do that. If I got low, like let's imagine I traded heavily with the Katarina and let's imagine I have almost no mana. I can just push the fifth wave before the sixth wave comes and then get free recall if you watch the first episode. Okay, and I get free recall, free TP. Why? Because I have prior, I have control over the wave. I can push it and just recall and get the free TP. Okay, but since I have a lot of ma HP and I have still have half my mana, I can still zone the Katarina and make her sail in and make her bleed as much CS as possible so I can have as much gold bleed as possible. Okay? I also know that Viego is still in top side. Okay? I still know Viego is still in top side. So that's why. Okay? But you can recall if you want to. Okay? If you're low HP. Okay? It's still an option. But as you can see, I did not recall. And I did... Uh, just trying to zone the, the, the Katarina as much as possible. Okay? To, to make her bleed in CS. You can see, every time... Look, my mini is about to die. I walk up. Make Katrina not be able to queue it. Okay? You can see? She, she, she's missing minions. A lot of minions. I get the cannon. Don't miss the cannon. This is really important. And do you see? Every time she wanna, this mini is about to die, I throw my W. Do you see this? I'm trying to zone her. And she goes. She goes for a trade. And I immediately trade back. Because I'm stronger than her. And I also have level level advantage. Do you see this? And now Katrina does not have a potion. And she's legit 300, 300 HP. She's in kill range right now. If I have a Luxe and Sudden Impact with Ignite, she's dead. And you can watch this. This is this is how you play in like a, 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 if, you, if you have an advantage or you're playing in a winning matchup. You need to zone them. And you can see she has 17 CS. I have 35. I'm literally double her CS. Double her CS in what? In four minutes and a half. I'm double the CS in the enemy mid laner. Because I'm zoning. I'm contesting every single minion. And this is what you need to do. You don't need to spam your W. You just throw your W when they walk up for the minion. For the CS. You throw your W. Do you see this? That's why in 4 minutes and a half seconds, I still have 160 mana. That's why. Okay? So you, you don't throw your W mindlessly. You only throw your W or look for a trade when she's trying to CS. Okay? That's if you're playing a winning matchup. If you're playing a losing matchup, please watch the first episode. Okay? So you can see. Now I know, again, I still know the jungler is passed towards topside. So he's most likely on scuttle or he just finished scuttle on recalling. Okay, I see my Mortar guys on top side under his tower, so he cannot gain top side. So either he finished recall, finished the scuttle on recall, or he's gonna gain mid lane. Since I'm, I am playing aggressive, I know Viego gonna gain mid lane. I know that for a fact. Okay, because I'm playing aggressive. If they have Shivana, if you have Shivana or uh, like a, like a Sejuani, they maybe not gonna gain mid lane. I mean, Sejuani can gain mid lane actually. She's a good ganker in early game. And again, see this it, and I killed her. This is first blood. And again, look, look. The Viego, the Viego is topside. How did I know the Viego is topside? I was hugging bot side the whole time. Why? Because I warded the Raptors in 1 minute and 20 seconds. And I know the Viego is topside the whole time. And even if he ganks me, it's still... Like, I'm hugging the bot side. It's too late. By the way, the Katarina will pay to her. She tried to bait. But it was like... She got too low. You need to give. What Kat The best thing Katarina can do in this situation is literally to give the cannon wave and recall. Which is also going to give you XP and gold lead. 
So you're always going to have advantage. Why? Because I'm zoning her. And this is the art of zoning. You get ahead. You don't need to kill the, you don't need to kill, to kill the Katarina. Because again, I'm double her CS. I'm double the Katarina CS. So even if I don't kill her, I'm still have like a, have a 200 gold advantage. But now since Katarina, she's trying to bait for a jungler. She died. And, and I, watch this. And then I escaped the gank. Do you see this? Do you see this? I was playing aggressive the whole laning phase. From level 1. Because I tracked the jungler and I know for a fact if jungler gonna come, can come from topside because I warded the, the raptors. So if you wanna play aggressive, you wanna zone people because it's a good matchup. Look, I'm double RCS. And I solo killed him. And the jungler come mid and wasted, I wasted his time. I wasted his time. So it's a complete mid diff from the start. And this is how you wanna learn how to zone and how to jungle track. Okay? I don't want the video to be too long. I could like talk for like hours. But this is generally how you want to uh, zone and to track junglers. You don't want to zone or play aggressive when you don't know where the jungler is. Because you're most likely going to get ganked or lose HP or lose your advantage or, more, or worse, you're going to die. Okay? That's it. Take care, everyone.